We're live. All right. We're live. Joey, uh, it's one o'clock on Thursday. So you guys know what time it is. It's time for Joey and Jason's training of the week on live. Um, hopefully, uh, as many of you guys can uh, catch this live as possible. Uh, if you do, uh, try to add some, we have some time at the end to go over questions and clarify any content we go through. Uh, otherwise, make sure to hit the replay. Uh, Joey, how you feeling this week, buddy? Oh, man, fired up. I'm excited to do this one. Um, I know show rate is always a hot topic for gym owners. There's nothing worse than having 10 appointments for the day and two of them show up. So hopefully in this training, we can shed some light on why that happens, how to avoid it from happening and how to keep your mind sharp. Awesome. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think that show rate is like one of those not so sexy numbers. But like you said, there's nothing worse than having five hours of appointments booked and, you know, sitting there with twiddling your thumbs waiting for somebody to show up. Um, and it's a great way, you know, it's a, it's a zero cost thing. So if you can improve your show rate, you can improve your return without having to spend any extra money. Um, all right, so let's kick it off. We all know we use uh, Uplaunch in our system uh, for, uh, for our lead nurture. Um, the first thing, you know, Joey, you probably in our industry have the absolute best experience uh, between systemized new uh, lead nurture and automated lead nurture. Talk for me if you could for a few minutes or whatever you'd like on the difference between systemization and automation and what your view on that is. Yeah, um, so <clears throat> we currently use a systemized program in Uplaunch, um, which essentially what it means is it's taking away the tasks that we would have to do um, but we are still putting our own tonality and our own words into the messaging of those tasks, right? So um, besides the one hour and the 24 hour appointment reminder, which um, it automatically goes out on your guys' behalf, but we do write that based on your gym and we give it uh, images and stuff based on your gym when we do your build. Um, everything else, all the rest of the conversations from getting somebody to show up for their appointment or schedule an appointment is in your inbox. But we are, we've systemized that so it is delivered to you in one place and it's very simple for you to get back, but you are getting back, right? right. And I think that that gives you a voice as the gym owner and you can uh, speak with them and pick up that conversation right where it left off when they actually show up at your gym, which is going to give you a much, uh, higher probability that they're going to like you and trust you and, and maybe buy from you versus automation, which is designed to save all of your time and not have you reply to any of those things. It takes it one step past systemizing. It will actually have conversations for you or reply with automated responses, which this technology has been on for a while. Facebook kind of got started with it with the chat box, right? So if somebody says, what is your location? It will automatically reply with your location. But other companies have tried to take it another step farther. And what that ends up actually doing is uh, making the conversations not that authentic. Or when somebody comes into your gym and they're referencing a conversation that they thought they were having with you and you have no idea what they're talking about, that could hurt the sale. So um, I, I won't say if there's a clear winner behind systemization or automation. I think it's more of a beliefs thing. And I think we believe in systemizing versus automating um, just from a being an authentic business owner standpoint um, and knowing where to save time and where to put your time, if that makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely does. I mean, especially at the volume of conversations we're talking about, we're not, you know, handling thousands and thousands of requests per day. Um, we're able to make an impact and it probably if done well in a systemized way, uh, we'll have a great ROI, even if you have to hire somebody to take care of that for you at some point. Um, yeah, I love the idea of, okay, the system, I don't want to have to use my memory for every single person. So the system is going to reach out to that person, but if they reply with, you know, something that needs response, aside from an automation system, systemization means now I'm in a conversation with that person. And, and we've had a lot of success with that. Um, obviously we've both used automated systems in the past. Um, and I think at this point in time, uh, for us in our gym's experience and the gyms that I've worked with, uh, that automated system works okay, but you're never going to lose a client with a systemized system. You could potentially lose a client if that automated system upsets them or something like that, you know, and, and I think that that technology will improve. I've, I've seen it happen, you know, and, um, you know, it's, I think there's other areas where you can save your time. I think that's a really important area. 
um, when you're, I mean, think about it, you're, you're just starting to get to know that potential client, you know, um, and you're not taking the time to even speak with them and you want them to sign up for a long-term high ticket program, unless you're completely transparent about the system and saying the first message is, Hey, this is an automated system that's designed to answer your questions for you. Please reply. Stop. If you no longer wish to you, but nobody's, nobody's doing that right They're They're letting the system speak on their behalf as the actual person. And I'm, I just don't, I don't follow that kind of principles. Yeah. And I think we've all been on calls uh, with, you know, comment or somebody where you're like, I know you're not real. And they have like the little sound of the keyboard tapping. That's ridiculous. Uh, you know, maybe a quick refresher. Uh, everybody here uh, should be using UpLaunch. I believe everybody on that's watching this call will be using UpLaunch. Uh, the question I would have for you is what's your best practices at your gym? You know, how many times uh, is your, the person responsible for lead nurture checking it per day? I know we go through this in the training, but this is a great opportunity to kind of go through what's a day in the life of lead nurture for the person responsible for it. Yeah, you know, we don't get fancy. We just never not do the fundamentals. So every morning we check for, I don't expect my my sales manager, who is the one that does up launch. Um, I have my sales manager do it because nobody's as motivated to get people to show up as they are, right? Um, so I, but I don't make them work outside of the hours that we have, you know, determined that are their working hours. So when they get in at 10 a.m. Um, for the day, they will first thing check up launch because they get finished working um, at you know 7 p.m. Um, and it depends 7 6 p.m. something like that. Um, they get finished working and there's a lot of conversations that come in during that gap, right? So they'll they'll come in and they'll answer all of those conversations in the SMS um, box. Then they'll check the appointments that they have scheduled for the day. Um, and make sure that all of those people are in the correct journey, not just for the day, but for the upcoming calendar week. It only takes them 15 minutes to do, but they'll make sure everybody's in the correct journey. So remember, if you have an appointment on your calendar, then they should not be in the original journey they came into the system through. That journey is designed to get them to schedule because the majority of our clients uh, or leads come in unscheduled, the system gets them to schedule. That is a big part of the systemization that you don't have to do, right? Um, but once they are scheduled, UpLaunch doesn't have the capability right now to automatically switch them into the, hey, you've been booked, let's just give you some reminders. You have to do that. That's part of the systemization. We're hoping that we can automate it. Um, but again, we don't own the software, guys. So that's what my guy does is he, he goes through all the conversations, then he looks at his calendar and makes sure that they're all in the correct journey. Then um, he will check the exact same thing at the end of the night, right? Um, so twice a day, beginning of the day, end of the day. Um, and at the end of the day, he's taking a look at his calendar once again. If he sees any new appointments that popped up, he's going to switch their journey to the correct one. He's going to take a look at his appointments of the day, and he's going to put them in the correct. Uh, he's going to mark the calendar with what happened. Either they no showed they showed up and didn't buy, or they showed up and they bought. One of those things happened, right? So he has to mark that and then reply to any conversations that uh, came in while he was in sales, right? And, then that, and that's it, because he's getting back to people twice a day. Nobody's upset with how long it's taking to get a response, and he's keeping track of where everybody's in, you know, and that's all you have to do. The messages do not go out more frequently than once a day. So you have plenty of time to get them into the correct journey. What I've seen uh, with other gym owners when they're having a, a poor show rate specifically from up launch is the first thing I'll look at is to make sure that they're using the system correctly before we dig into like, well, what are you saying? Or where are these leads coming from? Like first and foremost, are you using the system as it was intended to be used? If, if, if somebody has an appointment scheduled but you never switch their journey, just put yourself in their shoes, right? They're going to be continuing to get text messages from you asking them to schedule or, hey, this is your last shot or, hey, look at Susie. She's done amazing. And you're about to join the same program. When are you available? But if they've already scheduled, doesn't that seem like you're inattentive? Doesn't that schedule? Doesn't that seem like you're not paying attention? It seems weird. Why would they show up? Right. And so if you want to use this system, take the 15 minutes that it's going to take to use it correctly. Right. Because that's all it does take. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I know that for our gym, uh, we have our sales manager as well is the one that manages that. Uh, they typically do it in the morning and the evening. 
Uh, one thing I will say is I believe uh, if he has the time, he will uh, try and add a little uh, personalized message to the meetings that he has that day. And what happened when he initiated that, and this may not be the case for everybody, but uh, he's uh, a true believer in the, the methods that we use, and he's a great resource to ask and answer questions. And what happened was over the course of three weeks, he had a hundred percent close rate for, for a little while there. And I reached out, I was like, what are you doing to have a hundred percent close rate? That's absurd. You know, this is a guy who typically had a 60 or five or 70% close rate. Um, and what it turned out is he was like, look, man, the lead nurture is the sale, uh, the way he's running it right now. And that was, so what he was getting was he was getting everybody that showed up was going to sale. And so we were, we were going to buy. And so he was end up pushing it, pushing the sale kind of almost like a set, uh, which I thought was very interesting. Um, and then separately, since we initiated using uh, Uplaunch, our, uh, our schedule rate is significantly higher. The schedule campaign we're using, as long as you're checking off those tasks, I think that's like the number one thing I know both of us hammer, you in the videos and me on the calls, is I don't care if you think you know what you're like, make sure that you check off all of those tasks every single day, uh, even if you delegate it out. Uh, because as soon as we switched over to Uplaunch, our schedule rate's like 88% uh, over the last few months. Uh, and that's just si simply unheard of. Uh, and also, um, talk to me about when, when people reschedule, that's the other uh, benefit of, of systemization, is when somebody does reschedule, they don't get forgotten. Or if somebody has a post-appointment post nurture process that goes in, uh, talk to me a little bit about like the rescheduling and the, the post-sales appointment um, you know, follow-up that we have. Yeah, it's really cool because typically, um, especially in all other systems that I've seen, once it gets them to schedule an appointment um, and, and, they, and that, that time has come for that appointment, that's where the system leaves off. That's where it's, it's finished, right? Um, our system takes it a step further, right? Which I think is really cool because if they can't make that appointment time, if something else needs to happen, they have the ability to self-reschedule and then it puts them in the correct campaign to to get them to pick a new time if they haven't done so yet. Um, after the appointment is done, so long as you switch it to post-appointment lead nurture, and let's say they haven't um, they haven't bought, it immediately is going to send them uh, systemized messages to follow up with them. Hey, it's been a couple of days. You know, how are things going? Do you have any questions? And these are both text messages and emails that are written specific to fitness and nutrition, right? This, this is hours and hours. I mean, it's got to be thousands of hours when you count up all the emails that are programmed in and all the messages. And it's all systemized because you can change any of that stuff, guys. You click on a little pencil and use your own words. But it, I've never seen a system that picks up after the appointment and keeps it going, especially if they sign up. If they sign up, guys, they're getting put into a new client journey that's 100 days to build rapport and give them value. All you have to do is toggle one little switch. And it's, it's amazing, right? It's, it's seamless to go from a lead nurture system into a client retention system, right? So that's why when Jason and I decided to switch to Uplaunch, um, it was a big decision for us because it's, it's obviously, as you guys know, the most used piece of software in our entire program. You know, and so it was going to require a lot. And we wanted to make sure that it would do everything that we needed it to do. And it does, uh, so long as you take the actions based on the training that we laid out in front of you. Um, but yes, I would highly recommend that, like Jason was saying, to follow the tasks because even like I know the system like the back of my hand. And I still forget to do things. Everybody forgets to do things. I forget stuff all the time. So having that task as a reminder is like, oh yeah, I, I forgot to do that. Not that I didn't know how or I didn't understand the system. I just forget shit, right? And, and, that, and that is a reminder to help me do it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, what about phone calls? Do you guys do any kind of dialing at all in your sales uh, lead nurture process? Uh, so we don't do any phone calls. Uh, we did during COVID, um, but... Uh, we are going to be looking at, and this is something I'll talk briefly on. We won't get too deep into it now because we, it's not released yet, but we are going to be releasing the Facebook group training today. Um, and in that training, because of the nature of the high volume that comes along with growing your Facebook group, there's a potential for uh, leads that are not the most qualified or don't know exactly what you do at your gym. They might not know the difference between you and a planet fitness. So in this sense, we are going to be programming in a 15 minute phone call before they book their in-person appointment. And the reason, and, and guys, those could be five to 10 minutes. We call it 15 minutes. 
Um, my sales manager, Jake, has been taking some of those um, because like I said, we test everything before we roll it out. And sometimes he's done in five minutes because he's just seeing if that's somebody that would be a good fit for our gym. Um, and so that phone call is not to close. That phone call is just to set the closing appointment um, and to give them some homework, right? So we'll, we'll get a, a, we'll schedule them for a 15 minute call and we get them on the call. We ask them some questions about their goals, about what they've done in the past. We ask them some, we tell, we tell them a little bit about what we do at our gym and then we give them some homework, right? And the homework is a simple pre-call, a pre-meeting questionnaire, um, which is part of the new sales training. Um, and it's a video. It's a video re-recorded that basically explains what our gym is and what we do and who we help. And that's just their homework. Please, you know, watch this and fill this out um, before you come into our meeting. And guys, if somebody doesn't show up for that meeting after that, they weren't going to buy from you. And if they do show up after that, they're going to buy from you. So this is this is designed for show rate, right? and it's designed to get the highest quality leads. And it doesn't matter if the amount of people that make it to the bottom of your funnel is less, meaning it costs you more, you're selling high ticket, right? And so it, it it's overall a winning strategy. So phone calls is something that I would recommend you do if you, number one, have a really poor show rate, or number two, the people that are walking into your door are not your ideal clients for whatever reason. I'm not saying there's a specific reason, but for whatever reason, if they're not the right people, start jumping on the phone with them five, 10 minutes, um, you know, a day, the day before to make sure they're the right fit. Yeah. I, I love that point that you just made. Uh, we talked before the call about organic versus inorganic leads, like organic versus paid leads. And we talked about that last week. Um, but what we're doing is we're trying to take these paid leads um, and trying to make them as organic as possible, meaning have the best type of interaction we can before the sale, have the most exposure that we can for them to what our gym is, who we are and what we stand for prior to them walking in. And that way, when they walk in, they're basically just coming in to buy, right? Um, I know that, you know, with our sales team, the thing I would always tell them, you know, if we were struggling, I'd say, guys, you guys are nervous about something. It's not even a sale. These people saw an ad on Facebook, they clicked it, they filled out their personal information in 2020, they're putting personal information out there, they scheduled an appointment, they cleared their calendar, they got in their car and drove across town, and you think that you have to sell them, they're here to buy from us, you know what I mean, like, especially since we're not using any kind of a bait and switch, there's absolutely no incentive for that person to come there except for to buy the thing that you sell. And so I think that a lot of times will like settle people, uh, take set people at ease. Um, okay, because of the fact that we're going into the winter and we did touch on uh, COVID and phone calls, um, if we were in a situation or if your area is in a situation where you're you know, not wanting to take in-person, do you have a preference over phone versus Zoom uh, sales meetings? Uh, you know, maybe speak about that a little bit. Yeah, and you know, we've tested this uh, before too. And what we've concluded is we, we, started with Zoom meetings. Um, and I think for the initial meeting with somebody, we were getting a low show rate because the barrier of entry was higher. Um, it might be different now, now that everybody knows what Zoom is. When we started doing this, this was before COVID, people didn't know what Zoom was, right? Um, or as much, that you'd find yourself explaining it. Oh, it's like Skype or FaceTime. Now, I don't think you need to explain what Zoom is to anybody. Um, so first, that might be that might change a couple of things, but even more so, I prefer phone calls because then somebody doesn't have to be in a dedicated area. They'll take the call while they're driving. They'll take the call. You know, your availability. I'm sorry, their availability increases because now they're thinking, oh, I can take a call during that time um, when they wouldn't normally associate that time with being available to take a Zoom call. So mm -hmm. I would say start off with phone calls, and then if you can get them to jump on Zoom. Hey, do you have Zoom, by the way? Okay, hey, I'm going to send you my link really quick. Is that cool? And then get on, get across with them, but initiate it with phone calls. Or if you're doing a, a set call, a 15-minute pre-call like we just talked about, then schedule the, the sale call for Zoom because you know, you know they're going to show up. Ask them straight up on that 15 minute pre-call. Hey, do you have, do you guys use zoom or do you, yeah, oh yeah, I use that. Okay, great. Let's do, let's do our next call on zoom. That way I can, I can show you some stuff or explain or whatever. Um, but I think for the, uh, protecting your time and getting no showed, I'd make the first one. I would, 
um, phone calls. Now, I've seen gym owners be successful with it over Zoom. Um, of course, everybody wants to be on Zoom because it's easier to close. It's easier to build rapport. I understand that. But if you're, if you're not having the opportunity to because people aren't showing up to the Zoom, um, I'd rather meet with double the people over the phone personally. Yeah, I agree. And, and we do the same thing you did. Um, I think you just hit on it a little bit. Um, every time you take away, uh, every time you're a little further away from being in person, it hurts the sale a little bit, you know, so in person is the best, then Zoom, then phone, you know, et cetera. Uh, but to your point, if you're going to take twice as many phone calls, then you might as well just do the phone call. Couldn't agree more. Um, when you guys, uh, for your lead nurture, do you guys have people using canned responses for things that are, you know, somebody might say, you know, do you guys have childcare or something that would be specific? Do you guys have like a library of canned responses for your people to use? We do, but um, it's not very extensive because I want the conversations to be natural. Yeah. It is things like, um, do you guys have a kid's area? Do you have, uh, like, what's the, what's the address? Um, you know, what ages do you work with? Very, very uh, simple ones that you might find yourself getting a lot of. Um, but I think in totality, it's probably 10 canned responses uh, because we do want all, all of our conversations to be organic. Yeah, we're about the same. We still use, I don't know if you guys still use the uh, Front app for our email, but my team still uses Front, uh, which is something we've used in a previous system. And that way they, they have the canned responses built in. And I know that UpLaunch uh, has, has told us that they have an intention at some point, who knows, at some point of having those canned responses there as well. Um, and so if you find yourself answering the same question a lot, it's a good way to just answer it the best you possibly can and now it's fixed forever, right? You're building a bridge over that problem. Um, awesome. Uh, so we talked about phone. Uh, talk to me a little bit. So a lot of folks on this call have been running a reactivation campaign. Some of them have been running Facebook ads right now. Do you have any concept of, um, I know we do, I'm just curious on your side, of the show rate from a reactivation campaign who maybe already knows, likes, and trusts us versus the Facebook paid leads that just learned about us through a Facebook ad. Any, any uh, thing to speak about that? Yeah, um, uh, the reactivation campaign show rate is, is always going to be higher based on the nature of marketing, right? Um, they're warm leads versus cold leads, right? Um, especially if you're in the beginning stages of your reactivation campaign, because that's when we're messaging prior members, you know, and those prior members, if you were to parse that data and put them in a cohort of their own, I bet you that they are at like a 90% show rate if they schedule an appointment, prior members, right? Um, because they already know, like, and trust. They were customers. They paid you money, right? And so that is a very powerful tool. But even prior leads, um, they went through your process already. Some of them maybe already came in for an appointment. You didn't, you didn't separate those people when you gave us the list, right? So we don't know the journey of these people, um, but they all are at the bare minimum, the top of the funnel, just like anybody else would be coming from your ads, right? They're all there. Some are farther down the funnel. Some went all the way through. So when you mix that all together, their probability of them showing up is, is much higher, right? Uh, I don't have the numbers, uh, but I do know that it, it would, it, I would guess it's probably double. Yeah. It's, I, I know that for our gym, uh, you know, before we started running the reactivation campaign, I think especially because of the lockdowns and things, I think newer people that uh, just saw us on an ad are a little less likely even than they were before to come into an unfamiliar place. Whereas like you just said, if somebody was already a client or already showed up for an orientation meeting or something like that, if they even schedule, they already know what they're getting into. They already know who we are. They already have some sense of trust with us. Uh, and so you're right. Yeah, I think we had an 88% show rate, which is absurd. Uh, on our reactivation campaign. Obviously the volume percentage wise is lower. Um, great. Uh, is there such a thing as too much pre-sale conversation? In other words, is there such a thing as somebody wanting to share their fitness journey with you or their, their struggles with you over the text messages and possibly on the phone prior to the sale? Have you ever seen, do you have any kind of feelings on that? Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's good that you say that uh, because I'll tell you what, some people, are going to come to your gym and talk with you because they need to get it off their chest because they they want to explain their issues their problems that they're having it's eating away at them and maybe they don't have anybody else to, to talk with about it right 
So if you give them the opportunity to have that conversation with you that before their sales appointment in person, they may never come to it. And I know each one of us have been there uh, saying to themselves, oh my gosh, I can't believe this person no-showed me. I literally talked to them for an hour about all of this stuff. Yep. You, you relieved that from them, that you relieved them wanting to get that out. So now they feel that sense of relief. And what you want to do is wait until they are in front of you, relieve them of that, and then ask them to take action, right? Yeah. Now you don't have the ability to ask them to take action because you relieve them too early, right? And so we've all been there, but that's a big part of the sale is somebody wants to, that's why there's so much pain in it. That's why there's so much emotion is they want to get that off their chest. If they're talking about that type of thing, every single day to other people, they wouldn't get emotional speaking to you about it in the, in the room, right? So it is a rare thing that they're doing. Don't let them do that before the meeting. Um, and, and, and don't be rude, but simply say like, hey, we're going to dig into all the details. That's why I can't wait to meet with you, right? And, and just don't respond if they start giving you a, a, a paragraph. Plus it devalues you. Like if somebody sends you a message that's two paragraphs long, and you respond with a two, uh, a two paragraph response. Now they're thinking that you have unlimited time to sit there and speak with them. What is that? How does that affect your positioning as the expert professional that you just have randomly have, you know, an hour to sit there and talk with them about their life. If you're running a super successful company that is helping people transform every day, right? It subconsciously is affecting your positioning. So just don't give them that opportunity is all it's I would say. Conditioning, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, awesome. That was a, a really, really, that was gold right there, in my opinion. Uh, I know that I've heard before, um, I'm pretty sure that it's a dopamine hit, right? Like when you say something to, let's say you, you're, I'm reaching out to a coach about weight loss, just the act of me talking about my problem and talking about how I would feel by accomplishing it, I'm going to get a similar, it's just nature that I'm going to get a similar dopamine hit as if I accomplished that thing. Funnily, ironically, um, I know an entrepreneur, I've talked to a couple entrepreneurs, but one in particular who doesn't tell other people about his biggest plans because he knows that just by telling you his vision and his dream, it kind of subdues that dopamine hit a little bit. And so what he'd rather do is get the thing underway before he even talks about it. And I think that's, I could see both sides of that, but I think that's a pretty interesting thing. Yeah, I do. I do it the opposite way because I hate to let people down. You know, Me too. that's how I, yeah. And, and if I tell somebody I'm going to do something, you know, damn it, I'm going to do it. And so sometimes I prematurely tell somebody an idea because then I know I have to follow through with it, but that's my personality and I'm self-aware about it. I, maybe that's a military thing. Cause I'm, I'm the same way. We're, we're both army guys, but uh, there's probably people on this call who can tell you the 25 different big dreams and big picture ideas that I've told them about. And then the 15 or so that didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, okay. So the sale doesn't stop with the sale. So, you know, uh, up launch is a, a client life cycle marketing campaign or a client life cycle management CRM. Uh, so talk to me about, you know, how does systemization, how does nurture take place once we've made the sale uh, between the sale and their start date? And then even beyond that. Yeah. So if you guys haven't dug into some of those campaigns, um, the post-sale nurture is really, really cool because it's going to put them in first a hundred day campaign. And that's called the new client campaign. And that is going to uh, ask them, you know, what they're, how they're feeling about the program. It's going to ask them for uh, testimonials. It'll invite them to join your Facebook group. It's going to send them emails on a pretty regular basis with great content, like healthy eating tips and fitness tips and all that stuff. It's really doing a lot of the legwork that any successful gym owner should be doing newsletters, it's giving them, providing value. And it's branded. It's branded with your gym. I can tell you this. Your customers have absolutely no idea that this stuff is coming from a third party. And Uplaunch, I'm sure, spent a lot of money to um, have somebody write this stuff. This is professionally written, um, so it's a huge, it's a huge, huge thing that you have that you're doing for your customers as far as fulfillment goes. That is completely systemized for you, which is great. Then after the new client journey, they automatically go into what's called an established client journey. Now this is a hundred days past them signing up. And now it's going to start asking them to give you uh, reviews, right? So when you guys submit your, your client leads list to me, 
And then the next you know, week you see 25 star reviews coming on Google or Facebook for your gym. It's because I put them in the established client campaign and it's sending them a quick message asking them to, uh, to rate you. Uh, so you can, so other people in your community know more about your business and what quality of service you provide, right? This is guys, this is all systemated, systemized, and it's systemized in two ways. Number one, the stuff that Uplaunch has pre-programmed in its system for you specifically for brick and mortar micro gyms. And number two, the stuff that Fitbiz University is doing for you on top of Uplaunch to then, you know, make that a very smooth transition from uploading clients to getting them in the right place, all of that. Really, all you have to do is your phase one worksheet. And it just looked like you delivered a ton of value to your customers. Um, so, and that was our goal to begin with is how can we do this for you without enabling you? I, I couldn't agree more. Um, one point that I'll add, and then I have a follow up question, but uh, the that hundred days campaign, that's, that's the your time uh, it's been shown that first three months, that's where you're going to dictate. Is somebody going to fall off of their program? Are they going to go to another gym or just quit in general? Or are they going to stick around and become lifers, right? You know, we did some research that said if we had people stay beyond three months, their average term of engagement was like over two years. Uh, whereas in that first three months, very tumultuous, right? And so that's the area in that first hundred days. Listen, the lead nurture campaign, you can leave it alone or you can go in and edit if you want the, uh, the the scheduling and booking appointments. But that first hundred days is the place where if you do have a strong culture who's unique or a, a charismatic central figure or a certain thing about your gym that you want to get out to people, that's one place where you can reinforce that your views on fitness or nutrition or lifestyle, uh, you know, highlighting your stuff, uh, because that's the stuff outside of the gym that's going to keep those people you know, kind of loyal to your tribe and indoctrinate them into the way you guys do things. Um, my follow-up to you um, is what about the handoff from the salesperson to uh, whoever the practitioner is, whether it's an accountability coach or a personal trainer? Um, how do you guys handle that? Yeah, so that's another important thing. Um, and it's something that we've worked a lot of time to get dialed in. Um, and it's, it's one of the more difficult things to do. Um, but essentially what it is, is we are looking to get them scheduled with their coach as soon as humanly possible after the sale. And so we insist at our gym that our, our, our coaches have their schedule in our system, which we use MindBody. Um, so the salesperson can do that exact thing. So when he's sitting down and he's speaking with somebody um, and he is saying, yep, based on your goals, I think you'd be a perfect fit for coach Eric. Now, Coach Eric has tomorrow at seven o'clock available to do your nutrition orientation in your first workout. How does that work, right? If Coach Eric does not have his availability in, we cannot have that part of the conversation. But I can tell you this, the, the more quickly you get that brand new signup assigned to their coach and scheduled for their workout, the more likely they are going to be uh, to the more likely they're going to be to stay and stay for a long time because they're extremely excited. You look very good. You're onboarding people uh, in a fantastic nature and they don't have any time to have buyers or more or think about it. They're literally meeting with their coach the next day. They're just ready to rock and roll. Right. And all of that, all of that comes from setting the expectation that your coaches work for you. Obviously you pay them. And part of the job is they have to have their schedule submitted of when they're training clients. Now, again, we're pretty heavy on the one-on-one. -on -one. I'd say it's about 50-50 between one-on-one -on -one and uh, group, which is by design. Um, and so at our gym, almost every single member does both one-on-one -on -one with group. The way we set it up is they have one private session with their coach. And then the rest of the week, they're doing large group uh, coaching. Um, that way, they always have that that person to identify as their coach and, and that's their, their backbone and their strength, but they might not be able to afford for personal sessions with that coach, but we want them training four times per week. So that's how we do it. Um, and because of that, we need to know when these coaches are, are training and when they're not, it's easy to say like, yeah, I'll be here from four to eight. Yeah. But Mrs. Jones has to reschedule sometimes or next week on four 30 is not going to work. So we give them the Liberty to, to book their own sessions after that first one, after that first session that our, that our sales manager schedules, they continue booking that client themselves. Right. But we need to know when they're training. We need to know when they're available so we can have that conversation and make it a very smooth 
onboarding process. And then on top of that, as the owner, I tell uh, my sales manager that that person's first session needs to be within 48 hours. If they're committing to training um, four days a week, well, guys, that's, that is every 48 hours or less. So the first one, unless it's some weird coincidence that they're just not available the next 48 hours, which I don't believe in coincidence. So I, I, there's no reason why they can't be scheduled within 48 hours for their first appointment. Long-winded question to a, or answer to a short question, but I think that it would help some people. And I got some stuff to say about it too. So let's stretch it out even more. Uh, so for those of us, for those people that don't have personal training, or if you have a smaller staff where you don't have multiple people fulfilling on this stuff, um, you know, it, you can even, I know for us, we book that person's uh, first meeting with their coach right then. And we try to book that, that meeting on the eighth day before they even stand up from the sale, because that's future pacing them to get into beyond the seven day trial. Since we're all mostly running, all I think running seven day trials in our group, um, think of your seven day trial as a procedural trial, whereas like six weeks or 30 days or 12 weeks, you know, they're, excuse me, they're expecting a lot more out of that first experience. The seven day trial is a procedural trial. They wanna see that you're a professional organization. They wanna be greeted warmly. They want to have somebody, you know, hey, this is your salesperson. They're gonna hand you off to the coach. The coach is gonna be there quickly and they're gonna be professional. They're gonna have you booked for your eighth day. So now they're on this, they're, they're riding this wave into a, me a membership. Every single person involved in this transaction, especially the client, wants this to work. They want to get the goals that they want. They came to you because they have a need. And so that seven days and this part of the handoff is crucially important to show procedurally, hey guys, here, we're, we're really good at this. And I don't care if you're a single person operation with a thousand square feet, you can do that using this type of system, right? Uh, and then I forgot what I was going to say second, but that's that's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, we, we keep, so we monitor our stats and you guys should too, if you're using the, the master spreadsheets and it has the trial uh, retention numbers on there. So we keep 75%. It's almost like sometimes it's 73. So it's scarily close to 75% per month, yeah. which I think is, I think it's fantastic, but I'm also not surprised because right. it's designed to do that. It's designed, you, you literally have to mess it up or the person should have never been sold into the program in the first place. And I think that that's just the margin of error, a 25% margin of error, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, if they get, and, and you can see on the tracker, did they get welcome to the group? Did they have their nutrition consult? Did they have their first workout, right? If those three boxes are checked, you're keeping them, man. Unless you really had to twist their arm to sign up and they have no business paying you for, you know, 52 weeks or whatever you signed them up for. Um, sure. But yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay, so any final thoughts on lead nurture before we? Uh, I don't have any questions right now, but uh, on the in the group. But any final thoughts on lead nurture? Anything else to, to yeah. share with the group today? I'd say, and I, I'm partial to this, but look at the math. Okay, so if you are not spending very much time warming leads up via up launch, however, right, spending time to engage with them before they come in, take a look at how the numbers would change, let's say with 100 leads and 60% of them scheduled. Jason's at 80, but let's say 60% of them scheduled. You have 60 appointments booked, right? Um, and you want you want them to show up and, and just do some math. What are you gonna sell them? $2.99 a month, $69 a week, probably, okay? So what would the difference be if you signed up 20 people instead of 10, right? So let's say you have 60 booked and 30 of them show up and you close, let's say you're a good closer. So if you close 20 out of 30, right? You're closing 66%, it's good, right? Now, if you close at 66%, but you only close 10 people, you're looking at only 15 people that showed up. What's the difference in the math there between getting 30 people to show and 15 people to show when it comes down to sales? It's a shitload of money. Right. So wouldn't it make sense to get 30 people to show up instead of 15 when you know you're closing at 66 percent? Yes. I mean, it pays for itself. Even if you so, hire somebody to do it for you. Yeah. It pays for so itself. how do you do that? How do you do that? You get them warm. You have a real conversation with them. You do up launch like you're supposed to. You do all of those things. Right. Because the math is, I mean, the amount of money you make 
from getting those people in front of you, keeping all the rest of the variables exactly the same is huge, right? So take the time. Um, don't, don't ignore people on up launch. Don't forget to do things. You can't afford to forget, right? That's part of the game. And so I'm really excited for the Facebook stuff too, that we're about to drop. I'll just speak on it a little bit. Um, it is a different type of system uh, through a Facebook group where you won't rely as heavily on uplaunch. You'll just be scheduling them their appointment in uplaunch, but the rest of it is done through organic conversation, a completely different medium. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, we're dropping it today and that will give us a lot more to talk about when it comes to lead nurture. I think you're going to naturally see, um, higher numbers, but as the industry changes, as acquisition strategies change, Jason and I are always going to be on top of it. So this is the newest thing happening and we are on top of it. And we already have training built and delivered to you, which is our promise to you, right? And so um, as new things change, it does not mean the other stuff is not fantastic. It is, but guys, things change. That's why you're still not checking out the newspaper to figure out where you need to go to get your tire changed, right? Things change. And so uh, we're just on top of that for you. Uh, one last point. Uh, first of all, I'm so pumped for the Facebook stuff. I, I know a lot about it. I'm, I'm very excited to see that. I think that may very well be the future of taking leads from cold to warm to hot. Um, but to your point uh, about the financial, the, the financial, the math of getting people to show, I like to also look at it. I look at that as well, but I like to also look at it, especially to my sales team. Guys, if we're in the business of helping people, helping 10% of the people that want our help is just not acceptable to me and it shouldn't be acceptable to you. And so the way that we can help more people, let's say a hundred people are leads, that's a hundred people that raised their hand and said, I want to help change my, I want you to help me change my life for the better. And if we're only able to get 10 of those folks help, that means we told 90 people to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so to me, like that alone is what motivates me when it comes to the boringness or the redundancy or the monotony of, of lead nurture is like, look, these are, these are people that are asking for our help. And we are in a business that we set up because we are passionate about helping people. And, I don't care what you do on the floor. If only one, if only 10% of the people that want your help are ending up on the floor, then you're not doing your job well enough. You're not helping as many people as you could, right? Exactly. Um, great. Well, with all that said, let me just double check again. I don't see any questions on here. I think a lot of people are re-watching these uh, in the replay. Uh, so that'll be live as well. Uh, guys, thanks a lot. Joey, as always, it's a pleasure. You're a beast. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week. See you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in.